all of this could have been prevented. Of this, uh, as you can see, potentially law enforcement officials and other officials just outside of a gate, this on a street uh, near the Beverly Hills area, of course. So no doubt you have seen or heard that the rapper, producer, mogul, P. Diddy, Sean Combs, his homes were raided. I think one in L.A. and I don't know where the other in Florida. I'm not sure where, but they were raided. And then there were some things that were kind of that were leaked in terms of the documents, the government documents. Uh, regarding these allegations. Some of these allegations have to deal with sex trafficking and there were some names attached to the name. Well, obviously one of the big names in the Christian community that comes up is T.D. Jakes. And ladies and gentlemen, first of all, this can this could have been prevented. But before we do, I want you all to understand just how the government works. Unfortunately, I have some familiarity with about how their procedures go about. They are not going to put time dollars and manpower and man hours into this if they don't feel like they have a case and they typically don't use the show of force they do unless they think one it's serious but two also to make a an actual big point to draw attention to it and when they want to draw attention to this magnitude where everyone is speaking about it it's because they feel as though they have not just a strong case but a large case meaning if there are multiple layers and multiple people involved Am I saying that T.D. Jakes is involved? I have no idea. I have no idea. We're going to talk about the very fact that he's being mentioned, but here's how the government operates. They are going to prosecute. As a matter of fact, it's going to feel like they are persecuting. They are going to get into bank records. They have the ability to go into your bank records. Now, in this case, they've already done so. They have the ability to go into the different transmissions and communications that you've had. Not only do they have the ability to, they already have done so. Now, in some cases, there's more to go. But in order to get these uh, search warrants, a judge signs off. Well, how does he sign off? Well, because the judge has been given information by the different authorities. Because this is in, uh, in, in the scope that it's in, in California and I think uh, maybe New York or, or Florida, two different states, that lets you know the scope of it and the length the federal government is involved. The jurisdiction of the federal government is far reaching. And so they've already got information on you, at least enough to one, get a search warrant and then two, to indict. I think we think that those are just easy to come by. They're not as easy as you think to come by. Now, fortunately for him, there were no arrest warrants issued, but they might be coming. Obviously, the federal government is not exercising or executing a search warrant without having the intent in the future to also exercise an arrest warrant. They intend to bring someone down. They've got some information. They're going to ask you about the information with answers already there or their 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 uh, presumptions already there based off of what they've seen. They've heard testimonies. They spoke with some, with some folks and they didn't just speak with someone and took their word for it. They have been given some information, something electronic, something physical, something tangible. All of that equates to what we see and those names because what the government if you are prosecuting this case there's a couple things that you're looking for you're not necessarily looking for justice because how do you measure justice what you're looking for is obviously a conviction two you're looking for years in a sentence that comes after that three you are looking for dollar amounts the dollar amounts of things recovered as well as the dollar amounts in terms of what someone will be fined or some sort of restitution and then fourth more people, the more people, the bigger, the better. This is obviously how some a U.S. attorney or U.S. attorney actually moves their way because they can go back and point to a particular crime that was prosecuted and so forth. Go back and look at the prosecutors that were involved in some of these larger cases, the Enron cases or the Bernie Madoffs and so forth. Look at some of these large cases and see and follow what has happened to some of these famous prosecutors, what they went on to be in many cases in Congress, uh, in business, on TV things like that. Well, what does any of that have to do with T.D. Jakes? One, these are allegations and his name is tied to it. You do not want to be tied to or associated with someone going through this. We don't know exactly what is involved, if Diddy's even there. We don't know a ton of information about this at all, but this was dramatic video coming in. Don't know who these individuals are, if they're related to Diddy in any way. I can promise you, whoever this guy is, he doesn't want to be associated with, with P. Diddy right now at that moment and therein lies our problem. T.D. Jakes 
was associated or is associated. To what degree? Have no idea. But this brings up a very important lesson. I'm good. I'm the man for the job. I'm good. Come on. Come on. Give God some praise. I can feel you. Relax. Give God some praise. We're not going to let the devil take over our service. No, 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 no. I'm not going to let the rain stop me. I'm not going to let the weather stop me. And I'm sure I'm not going to let the lion stop me. You can tell everyone that you're fine, you're good, and you can believe that. But I can promise you, if he actually is involved and if the federal government is looking at, after you, you're not so fine. Remember, if it says United States of America versus and then your name, I know what that's like. That is not a good feeling. That is a sinking feeling. Now, the only thing, the only person, the only organization, the only entity that you want to have on your side when the government is after you is God. The issue is, will God be on your side? In my case, God was not on my side because what I was going through, I had coming. I brought that upon myself. And in many cases, people like myself or even now, maybe T.D. Jakes, rightly or wrongly, they've brought some things on themselves. I'm okay because I never told you I was perfect. I never put down nobody. I got my own flaws and my own fault, but I didn't do that. Now, I don't know if he did anything or not. I have no idea, and that's not my point. The point of this video is not to talk about what he did not do or the allegation. I, I hope and pray that he's not involved because there are a lot of folks who are innocent who are going to be hurt because they put their trust in him. Now, I think that you ought not to have put your trust in someone who has so loosely and uh, ungodly handled the text the way he has and said some things that are just not correct. That aside... This is a lesson that we can learn. And here it is. The Bible tells us to avoid the very appearance of sin. This passage abstain every form of evil. Being in and around certain people, we're told also by Paul, he says, do not be bound together with unbelievers. This is you doing it to yourself. For what partnership has or have righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? The very problem that we have here, and this was preventable, is the fact that T.D. Jakes is known to hang out with all of these different celebrities. We know about the pictures of him with P. Diddy, and we know about him being at these Diddy parties. How many of these Diddy parties? I don't know. Why would you go to a Diddy party? Why would you go there in the first place? That's one problem. That is a severe lapse in judgment. You were not going there to evangelize. You were not going there to uh, make them, to, to cause them to see the light, to show, let your light so shine in these places. No, you were going there to hang out. And that's a problem. You were dazed. It seems like you were in a P. Diddy days. You were dazed by the allure of the stardom because now this is a person that's always, he's got his hands in a lot of different things because he's trying to increase his brand, his star, whether it be with music or whether it be with uh, movies and production, whether it be with other different ventures, rather than just being a shepherd. No, you, you're, being a shepherd is not something that he's all that comfortable with. He's not content with being just a shepherd. I've got to do some more things. What he ought to do is, well, you know what? Be smart. Be smart and stay away from some of those things. I don't have a problem with you doing things outside of the church to maybe to, if you want to get in some real estate ventures or whatever, those are your own things. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think you got to be careful about that because if you are going after money, remember those people that desire to get rich, they're the ones that end up falling. It's that desire just to be rich, not being content with what you have. And let's be clear, what he has it is more than enough for anyone to be content, but he seems to want more. And so what has he done? He's put himself around these folks, around the PDs of the world, around the Tyler Perry's of the world, around the Oprah's of the world, around the Steve Harvey's of the world, around the Will Smith's of the world. These people that you see him with indicates that he has a desire. It seems like a desire to be around these people rather than what he's supposed to be doing. That is to share the gospel. One of the qualifications of a pastor is that he has a good reputation amongst obviously the inside people, the folks in the church, but also amongst those outside the church. Why is that? Because we're trying to bring these people outside the church in the church. And if they look at you with contempt, the same way they look at anyone else, or you're just like the world, 
well, then how are they going to come? And so the lesson that we can learn from this is who knows what happens there. Whatever he did, that's a lesson learned. Don't do that if he did do anything. But the bigger lesson that, that can something we can all understand and not do, that is to be around the people that you should not be around. Fellowshipping with these people. It's clear, uh, even if you want to claim that you have been trying to mentor these people, it's not working. Didi or none of these folks or the, the Steve Harveys and Oprah's and so forth, they haven't gotten closer to Christ that we can tell. They haven't made a strong profession. And so clearly what your tactic isn't working. Don't hang or have fellowship with darkness. If darkness wants to have fellowship with you, meaning that they want to come to the light, let them reach to you in a way and let and let you also be the guiding light. Don't you go to the ditty parties, have the ditties of the world come to you. Have the ditties of the world come to the altar. Have the ditties of the world come and say, hey, I need whatever you can give me as it relates to Christ rather than the other way around. Don't do that because we see what's happening. And if he ends up getting caught up in this wide net that the government is going to cast, he will have nobody to blame but himself. Same for us. If you hang around certain people, you are going to get caught up and you'll have nobody to blame but yourself. And so let this be a lesson. Be careful. Be careful who you go and fellowship with. Don't go to the parties of the enemy. Amen.